Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. We begin with Mikko Gagozov's Uranus mission, management thereof, specifically of the food, water, and oxygen consumption. It has a recycler on board in those USI parts, however, uh, because the USI parts recycler was configured for stock TAC life support and Realism Overhaul changes TAC life support, I had to manage that a little bit and make sure it was recycling in the correct proportion. And so that was the first thing, checking that out. This was the Wayward Satellite that actually crashed the game when I tried to do the staging on it, and I'm not too sure why I'm even bothering with this, but apparently uh, at this point in the live stream, uh, and it's been a few months since I did this live stream, I was still trying to get it over to Mercury to do some resource scanning, which is probably a bad idea because it's probably just going to crash the game when it stages again. Anyway, next up, we have the launch of a new Glenn, as you can see, sending supplies to our mirror station around the moon. Now, there's no audio right now because I'm using the backup video. The original video was lost for some reason or another. I don't know if the file got corrupted or something like that. That happens sometimes when I'm recording. Anyway, uh, so at least for this little bit, we don't have sound. There is sound later in the video, but separation of the first stage of New Glenn, because we're carrying as high a load as we can carry to the moon, I expended the first stage instead of reserving some in order to have a pretend landing on a drone ship or barge or whatever. And we have a truncated HTV carrying the supplies to the moon. And we're just going to use the upper stage of New Glenn to do the transfer to the moon. Here I light the BE-3Us a little bit early and have them do the turn because the RCS was taking too long. And uh, there we have the conclusion of the lunar transfer burn. And we need to do a bit of a correction. I start doing that with the RCS, but uh, using the RCS on the upper stage would take too long. So I separated off the payload. It has an AJ. Uh, 10190 on the tail. Basically, it's got a supplementary Orion service module. Not really. The Orion service module is much heavier. It has just enough uh, to do the capture burn around the moon and dock. So, on the tail of the HTV, it's got that extra bit of propellant and the AJ10190, which you see burning there. That's convenient. Uh, I mean, as far as engines go, the AJ10190 is always convenient for moon missions. But uh, that's why NASA is going to be using a lot of it. So anyway, there we have to correct inclination for Mir because Mir is in that polar orbit and we didn't go directly into that polar orbit. In later streams, I eventually get the right timing for some of these things. Not, not for Mir so much, but for the gateway. We eventually put Lunar Gateway around the moon and it's in a really awkward elongated orbit and we really have to get the timing right for that for it to be efficient. Anyway, here is the rendezvous with Mir. And for some reason, in the midst of this approach to Mir, I was talking about my Shuttle Mark II model in Blender and decided to show the audience that. Uh, so I've used this in videos already. Uh, this live stream was from a few months ago. And the idea behind the Shuttle Mark II was that it would actually fit in the fairing of New Glenn. That's what that cylinder is. It's representing the fairing diameter. And I wanted to make sure that all the bits managed to fit. The wings also fold up into there uh, so that it could fit properly. But I was still working on the model at this point. And that has since been developed. So I don't know if the Shuttle Mark II, I've used it in the live streams subsequently to do uh, small jobs, especially in lower orbit. A few things maybe higher up, but I haven't gotten as much out of it as I was intending. We had to remove an HTV from the station. It was already there, uh, ready, you know, with the supplies, but I emptied the supplies as much as possible, deorbited it around the moon. So you can see how close the other HTV that's approaching is. But we get this on its way. I like the HTVs, this look. Anyway, departing Mir, and then the other one arriving at Mir. And the cycle continues. Only recently have I decided to put larger supply modules on my stations, especially around the moon, so that I won't have to resupply them so often. But for now, the they were on basically a normal cycle. 
So after that, on to the Mercury missions, which we still have to do ridiculous ion engine burns with in order to get them to Mercury. You can see there's a sort of a close approach with this one. This is Arthur's main ship here. He was the commissioner of this Mercury mission. But we have to basically wait a whole orbit to get to Mercury. There's an encounter there, you see after 80 or so days. That's one reason we had to resupply the moon station, uh, a meter around the moon, because otherwise it would deplete of supplies before we got to this encounter here. Now, whether we can make this encounter is a toss up because Delta V is pretty tight. And then in addition to that, we have this, this is the vehicle, well, this is the stage that was supposed to push Arthur back home. And here we have another Mercury mission, which is Arthur's girlfriend, Katak, who uh, is in a Mercury station that we were trying to get over there. And it's in, well, it's going to approach, but it's just going to fly right by at this point because it doesn't have enough time to capture with the ion engines. Again, Mercury's orbit is so quick that the ion engines and the ion engines, ion engines take so long to do the burns that it's just hard to get them there in one orbit. So... Arthur is doing another one of those correction burns. And the problem is uh, the Mercury station has plenty. So uh, Arthur's girlfriend is fine. But uh, here, this vehicle is a little bit short. Uh, well, it's getting short on the food, water, and oxygen. So we are going to have to deal with that in, uh, in a very pragmatic way. <laughs> You'll see uh, close to the end of this video. So anyway, replotting, checking the delta V's that are required because we have such little delta V left in this now. And here again, another burn with Mercury Station. This has more substantial delta V, but not the amount of time it needs in order to use it properly. And this is the supply vessel, which would it would be nice if we could get this over to Arthur. He needs it now, but we cannot. And this, another burn with the Mercury. So the thing is, I'm hopping back and forth because if we try and do just one, it would take all the time and we wouldn't be able to do the burns with the other vessels. So I'm hopping back and forth between the vessels, trying to handle the burns uh, in parallel. They all need to be done roughly at the same time. That's another complication. If the burn takes six days, which sometimes it does, um, then, and there's four vessels, then each one can only do one and a half days. So, that's a pain. And that's what I'm doing. Yep, just uh, one at a time trying to do them as best as I can. Now, for a completely different ion engine ship, this is our Saturn mission, head to Titan with Lila Root and Mr. Doobie. This only has one cluster of ion engines, that's actually ten ion engines because this had plenty of time to do the burns. However, because this was doing its correction burn in the midst of when we had to do all those Mercury burns, I decided to light its Gemini lander engines, which were its additional OMS engines that were meant for capture around Saturn, and use those to hasten its um, correction maneuver there, so that I could get back to all these Mercury burns. But alas, here we go. Mercury Station did not do its burn in time. It's still doing the burn, by the way, during this time warp. Um, you can see the Delta V tick down because I can use the ion engines during time warp. One of the things that I decided to ultimately do because of this horrible situation was currently I'm using realistic ion engine configurations based on a real ion engine that exists. I decided that maybe that was going too far. We have reactors on each of these that can supply much more power. So I ultimately will change the configurations on the ion engines so that they can use more of that power, basically multiplying the thrust by 10, which of course shortens the burns by a factor of 10, which is a lot easier. So suddenly a six day burn becomes a burn that takes only a six, uh, 60% of a day. So uh, what is that? Whatever that is. 14.4 hours, <laughs> something like that. Anyway, more Arthur. And yeah, 
Arthur's burn does not work either, so he's going off on Mercury Escape, and we really need to get more supplies to him at this point. I was really hoping this capture would work, but did not, and because the burn isn't instantaneous, there's also inefficiencies because of that, huge inefficiencies, so we don't really have the Delta V anymore. So, Arthur really needs help, and I did have KSB Interstellar in here the whole time, so people suggested that I use this Attila thruster, which needs a pretty large reactor and generator, those are very heavy, uh, but it's an augmented arc jet, which as far as I can tell functionally means it's got the ISP of an ion engine, but the thrust of something better, something in the 100 kilonewton or hundreds of kilonewton range, at least as far as the size that I've picked here which, of course, can handle the burns quicker. So it's sort of like an uh, ion engine that doesn't cause me to pain and suffering. So I decided, okay, we'll use that. So I launched it on this Kasei rocket with uh, eight Sajita boosters. So the rocket itself has five engines that are roughly the equivalent of an RS-68 uh, burning hydrogen and oxygen, whereas the eight boosters each have five methane and oxygen engines at 1,000 kilonewtons, basically like five Merlin engines using methane and oxygen. And this is, uh, as the eight boosters, the core, which is hydrolox, and upper stage, which is hydrolox, and then a nuclear stage, which is using a timber wind that is also, that has hydrogen in it. So it's a pretty tall rocket as a result of that. And separation of those boosters. And separation of the core there. And so there's a single ED6 engine, which is uh, the same as the core engines, just with a really, really huge nozzle. Uh, and here I'm just rearranging for the fairing set. And there we have our Attila pusher stage with extra supplies. It's not unlike the vessel that we had to push Arthur back from Mercury back to Earth. It's basically the same setup. So here's a Timberwind, but for some reason, I don't know, I don't remember why, I decided not to use the Timberwind. I decided to go straight to the Attila Thruster. I think I was testing the Attila Thruster here to see if it really had the performance. I did a test on the pad, but I wasn't, wasn't sure how it would be in space. So here I lit it in space and got it started. And it's just sort of... Yep, there's throttle up. And the thing is, it didn't get the thrust that I was expecting. You can see it's getting about 80 kilonewtons, and its burn time is really long, and I can't time warp through this burn for some reason. So, I decided that we would need to do something a little bit more because this burn time is just too long for what we're gonna do. I can't make my audience sit through this without being able to time warp through it. So, I decided that we would have to revert this and I would have to figure out something. Maybe add a bigger reactor and a bigger Attila thruster with more thrust or I need to figure out something else. But for now that's the struggle. We have some wayward missions around Mercury. Well, not around Mercury, that's the problem. They're at Mercury orbit or close to Mercury orbit around the Sun. So with that being the situation, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.